guys, Dr. D here. I am your local urgent care physician, family practice physician. I practice in-person telemedicine, and I also practice preventive medicine. I'm a daily yogi, a mom, and I do believe in the power of harnessing mindfulness. There's been a lot of talk in the mass media and a lot of hype about this new COVID variant that's like, you know, causing this ruckus in society. Let's dive into some details. The new COVID variant is known as Pirola, not Pirana, Pirola also known as BA.2.86. Why do they give these viruses such weird names? It's basically a highly mutating variant of Omicron. So just to put things into perspective, in the past we've had mutated variants. Some of them have been, you know, anywhere from two to 10 mutations. This one has 30 and that was what the concern was. However, early data and research is showing that this variant is no more of an issue than any other variant. And this is likely because of a combination of both vaccination and exposure. And no, I am not pushing vaccination in any way, shape or form. However, because a lot of the society has been either vaccinated and or exposed to the virus already, you have some version of immunity to this virus. It's very important to note that hospital rates from this specific variant are not higher than any other variant. So let's all take a deep breath. Like I said, I practice both urgent care in person and I'm also licensed in five states, so I see telemedicine patients from five states. I have a pretty good grasp of what's happening right now in the general, otherwise healthy public. And that is that I haven't sent a single person to the hospital because of a COVID-related illness in a very, very, very long time. Most people are presenting with anywhere from fever, chills, just general flu-like illnesses, your typical influenza, to more milder illnesses like sinus issues, sinus infection, cold symptoms. Oftentimes people can test positive at home or in the days leading up to it. And when they end up in my urgent care, we retest them and yeah, they're positive. So now drum roll, please. The advice you've all been waiting for, what to do about it. I think I take a pretty reasonable approach. If you're having sick symptoms, stay home. Listen to your body. If you're sick with fever, chills, body aches, and you're just really fatigued, you probably need to be in bed resting, right? And if you have more milder symptoms, maybe the option is that you work from home for a few days. Now, having gone through it myself, we don't get sick days in residency or any of our training for that matter. I totally understand how American is completely counterculture to like this concept of, hey, when you're sick, stay home, relax, chill out, give your body time to heal. Your body can heal itself. You all deserve to take some time to rest when you're not feeling well. So that being said, I never fight my patients or give them trouble for sick notes. Sometimes we just all need a mental health day or two or week. So I know again, this is counterculture society, but it just simply makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so this next part, I might totally get massacred by the pharmaceutical companies and the general medical community for this, but what to do when you have COVID, to drug or not to drug. So I know when you're sick, you're feeling like pretty crappy. You're just like, I just need something to take to make me feel better. And you've seen my other videos where you go to the cold and flu aisle at the drugstore and you're like, oh, I can take this. Oh, this is sinus and cold and this is cold and flu. And I could just combine all of these and then overdose on over-the-counter medications. And none of this stuff actually really works, but I'm gonna do it anyway, even though science doesn't prove any of it. I get it. You wanna feel better. So currently the only drug that we have that's FDA approved as an outpatient treatment for COVID is Paxlovid. And this is where I might get massacred, so don't shoot the messenger. A little disclaimer, I'm that person that does not give my otherwise healthy children, and again, I say otherwise healthy children, Tamiflu for the flu. I believe that between like some flu shots and some years we don't get the flu shot and their natural immunity, they don't necessarily need a drug to help them recover from the flu. So I never suggest Paxlovid in otherwise healthy individuals. And let me tell you why. There was a period early on where a lot of the medical community was dishing out Paxlovid like it was candy. Oh, you didn't have a positive test, but I'm just gonna give you Paxlovid just in case. Oh, here's your Paxlovid, here's your Paxlovid. And they were just passing it out like it was candy, even when it was under just the emergency use authorization. And 
what I was seeing clinically was a lot of people getting this prescription and not being able to get an appointment for these rebound symptoms they were experiencing with the primary care doctors because, hey, it's very difficult to get in with your primary care doctor often these days. So then they end up in urgent care saying, hey, I just finished the Paxlovid today and I was feeling better, but now I'm actually having more severe symptoms. It's like all of a sudden the COVID just came back. What do I do? So this is what I would consider to be rebound COVID. This is what the literature talks about is when you stop the five day treatment, which the treatment is only five days, you actually can get more severe symptoms because the viral load that was initially suppressed just starts to replicate again, but it replicates even more so. And this is a pretty well known phenomenon with antiviral treatment for any virus for that matter. So me, as a doctor, I was like, okay, let me start reporting this because there's a line and you can call Pfizer who makes the drug and you can just get on the phone and report it. And uh, yeah, people should know about this. Hey, medical assistant, could you bring the patients back a little slower? I just need to make a quick phone call. It'll be really quick to, to Pfizer. I got to report rebound COVID and just, just slow them down a little bit. I won't be more than like four minutes. I know it's been like a half an hour, but just like, just, just, you know, hold them up a little bit longer. It's, I'll be there soon. I promise you, I'm still on hold. So needless to say, it was taking me like 20 or 30 minutes to get through to a person to whom I could actually report this concern for rebound COVID from the perspective of a healthcare practitioner. So likely the cases of rebound COVID are grossly underreported in my opinion. Also, Paxlovid, now that it's FDA approved, has very specific indications. This is straight from the FDA website. On May 25th, 2023, Paxlovid was approved for the treatment of mild to moderate COVID in adults who are high risk for progression to hospitalization or death. That's it. It says nothing else. So unless you meet those indications, I would highly suggest that maybe you reconsider taking this drug. They're coming for me. So while it is super crucial to stay informed regarding public health events and stay updated on this, there's really no reason to panic. I promise you. We can all just simply use our basic reasoning skills to get through this together. If you're sick with a respiratory virus and coughing, stay away from other people. Or if you have to be around people, put a mask on so that you're not spewing saliva over everything and everything when you're coughing. <coughs> Now I'm gonna get it from the anti-maskers too. As a physician seeing sick patients and a mother of two school-aged children, I use a concept from dialectical behavior therapy called radical acceptance. This means that I keep my mind and body as healthy as possible. I keep my children as healthy as possible with activity, with nutrition. And I simply accept the fact that we are all existing in this evolutionary Petri dish and that's what I can do to maintain my health. And above and beyond that, it's out of my control. So instead of like washing my hands like 15,000 times a day and just getting completely obsessive about this kind of hygiene, which is also not good for your mental health, you can just simply do what you can and radically accept the rest. For example, when I'm sick, I don't quarantine for my five-year-old child. She doesn't understand. She's too young to understand. And she would be very scared if mommy was like, no, I can't come around you for five or 10 days. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. Don't even come within five feet of me. Like that would be a horrible thing for a five-year-old child. She doesn't get it. However, my 12-year-old, he understands more that, hey, mommy's sick and mommy's gonna get better and he might choose to, you know, keep his distance. We wash our hands after using the bathroom. I'm pretty much a stickler on that. You're gonna wipe your butt, you're gonna wash your hands. We also dig in the garden out back and sometimes we eat tomatoes without washing our hands or even washing the tomatoes. So in the end, balance is life, life is balance, and mental health and physical health cannot be separated. They are one. I hope this information was helpful for you. And please, if you haven't already yet, subscribe to support more free information. Feel free to comment below if you have any topics you want me to cover.